I'm Grant Kittleson. and this is your Prince George's County Public Schools update. We're here to take a look at some of the notable events going on in our school system. We begin with an annual athletic event where everyone is a winner. Long before and long after the torch was lit at the annual Special Olympics Bob Janice Spring Games, those taking part in the games are winners. Brittany Sweet was the one who had the honor of finishing off the torch relay in this year's games. How was the light in the torch? How good. It was good. Did yeah. you have fun? Yeah, have fun. Any day, um, be, it, be it either um, her in the torch lighting ceremony or just participating in the events. It's never about winning a medal or anything. It's just about being com competitive and enjoying the day. Special Olympics has been going on in Prince George's County for over 40 years. Thanks to the efforts of Bob Janice, who the spring games are named after, he would be proud of the participants who work all year round with some help from those in the school system to be ready for their events. Our adaptive physical education teachers are the ones that are out there working with these students day in and day out, training them on these events. So today is their day where they can go in front of all their friends and family and show what they can do. And what they can do is pretty impressive, especially to those that have been with them throughout. To have all their friends and their family, like I said before, coming out there and cheering them on, you can just see all the smiles on their faces and when they get their medals and the sense of pride and an accomplishment that they feel today, it, it, it just goes beyond words. I could say this, they look forward to it every year because as soon as it's over and next year when they come back to school in August, they're going to say when Special Olympics. Melanie Clark is one of those parents who comes out to support her daughter, Sierra who began participating in these Special Olympics when she was eight years old. She continues to be part of them at the age of 20, not only for her enjoyment, but also for the help it provides for her long-term health. That's something that they need for a lifespan, to be fit and stay healthy. And so we encourage this, these types of events so that they can display how much they've been working on their health and to stay fit, which makes them limber and flexible. So, so they can have a meaningful life. You gotta be healthy, you gotta be fit. No doubt the Special Olympians are courageous. So too, the Buck Lodge Middle School students for boldly going where no students have gone before. Watch as they and their iPads get some worldwide attention. And the resources where I got them all from. Listening carefully and watching intently, over a dozen international visitors flocked to Buck Lodge Middle School recently to see what an iPad in every child's hand can do for learning. The delegation from Osaka, Japan, was treated to the iPad's winning ways at one of the four Title I Prince George's Middle Schools that has been using the technology for the past two years. I would say that we have some real serious data to show that we're onto something. It's not just about um, the device. It is about the engagement. It is about looking at teaching and learning in a different way. It's about being excited about being in the classroom again. And it's about moving from what we did in the traditional way into something that's new and innovative and creative. Designed to convert students from consumers of knowledge to creators of knowledge, the iPad has revolutionized the way teachers approach their lessons. Throughout the building now, that's what you're seeing, project-based or personalized learning, where students are able to freely work in any area of the classroom that they want to. They're able to work on the type of project that they want to. They're able to select the ap application that they want to use, and more importantly, how it looks. So students have that choice. That's personalized learning at its best. Despite a daunting language barrier, the iPad's potential was a lesson not lost in translation. I want them to walk away just thinking, wow, that was an amazing place where students are engaged and learning. Even a visitor who speaks no English can understand the magical language of science that Bill Nye the Science Guy brought to Prince George's County. Here's a look at his wizardry and wit. You guys, I have poured liquid nitrogen for many years, and it's still the greatest thing ever. Liquid Nitrogen's famous freezing act was just part of a show put on by the equally famous Bill Nye the Science Guy. Appearing at Greenbelt Middle School recently to award 30 iPads to a contest-winning teacher, 
and to talk up a new online education resource known as Sophia, the PBS star wowed the crowd with his wit and his wackiness. And you know, marshmallows are soft and happy and puffy, right? But after they've been roasted in liquid nitrogen, they change quite a bit. The smoke-breathing wizard, with the help of students, went on to demonstrate energy efficiency. Witness the effort to light traditional light bulbs. Yeah, let's get it bright, dude. Come on, crank it, yeah. The guy's working, you can hear him. All right, cool. And the movement of air with a trash can, its hollowed at bottom covered with a piece of shower curtain. It was all to show that even the wildest phenomena are far more physical than paranormal. If you didn't know that there was a guy on the stage with a trash can and you saw the candle go out, you could easily think that there was a ghost or some magical force, right? But it turns out it's a trash can with a shower curtain and some duct tape. With spooky smoke rings shooting from his trash can cannon, the science guy ended his show with a wish that the students would both appreciate science and just possibly use it to pave the way to fame and fortune. And I hope some of you in here are part of that. I hope some of you in here will make the next discovery the next thing in science that will change the world. And frankly, I hope some of you get rich. Have any of the students that you've ever been in contact with changed the world or become rich that you know well, of? Well, we'll see. This is a great question. I have, as I say all the time, I try to get it. I mean, so many people come up to me, I used to watch your show, now I'm in engineering school, now I'm a physician, now I'm an oncologist, whatever it is. I think to listen to that big idea, you know, somebody's rich or changed the world, we need another 10 years. We'll see. For these people to become captains of industry. Bill Nye may have eaten a frozen marshmallow, but at Northwestern High School's Food Expo, he could have eaten much, much more. Here's the tasty details. What is it you've got there? Here is the lo mein, whole grain lo mein noodles with a Thai sweet chili sauce over with turkey meatballs, reduced sodium, reduced fat, and broccoli. It was a food lover's paradise recently as vendors served up one tasty dish after another to would-be diners at school cafeterias. Hoping to add some variety to school menus and some nutritional punch as well, the Food Services Department staged its second annual Food Expo at Northwestern High School. And what the organizers got, along with tempting dishes and mounds of shiny produce, was feedback on what kids would eat and what they wouldn't. How does it go over? How does that broccoli go over with the students? Well, as long as you have something good, like the sauce, the students will love to have the vegetable syrup. To cover the taste, yeah. all right. Strawberry is very popular. I think they, they really enjoy the oranges. Um, you know, they, they really eat the grapes a lot. They, they really like most everything you give them. When it's plums and peaches and nectarines, they go for those. So they, they seem to... Uh, they seem to go for anything that's sweet. We're giving parents an opportunity to come as well as the students to sample the products that we offer during the school year. We have a survey as well and as they go through the different stations they'll check whether they like the product or they don't like the product, you know, it's positive, no, whatever, and so we, we do get feedback because I'm listening to a lot of the students, they say, we really like this, can we get this next year? And that's really what we're looking for. Health is wealth. You cannot buy your health and good eating habits is just so important and we have to learn them at a young age and even though something may not taste good, it can still be very good for you. For graduating students, for whom the new entrees like fish tacos are coming a little too late, all was not lost. We got a nice salad mixture with cucumber, fresh cucumber, fresh tomato, cilantro, and diced mango. And then a little low-calorie ranch dressing with cilantro and, and, and lime in it. Now we want to find out from the food critic here. She's shaking her head. What do you think? This is really good. I really like this. Um, I'd eat this more often if I came here, but I'm graduating this year, so 
sad. Maybe yeah. you can get the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it for this edition of the PGCPS Update. For Dave Zarin, I'm Grant Kittleson. We'll see you next time with more good news from Prince George's County Public Schools. Take care, everybody. Thank you.